The state of Florida and the Federal Environmental Protection Agency have determined that nearly 74 percent of all open waterways in Pinellas County are laden with too much nitrogen and phosphorus pollutants. Most of the corrugated metal stormwater pipes in unincorporated Pinellas County were installed prior to 1976 and have reached the end of their useful life. More than 28 miles of this pipe, in sections large and small, is dangerously near the point of collapse. Pinellas County's open drainage network of ditches and drainage canals is currently on a 25-year maintenance cycle. As a result, many of those water conduits are so clogged up and filled with debris that they cannot adequately drain the surrounding communities. Stormwater management in Pinellas County has reached a crisis point. Hello everyone, I'm Len Sosinski with the Pinellas County Communications Department and with me right now on this month's installment of Good to Know is Kelly Levy. She is Division Manager for the Pinellas County Department of Environment and Infrastructure in charge of watershed management. And she's got some information to share with you that you'll find good to know. Kelly, hello, how are you? I'm doing very well, Len, how are you? And welcome to the program. <laughs> Thank you. Kind of joked earlier that it's a problem we only have to worry about when it rains. <laughs> and, uh, you know, right now we're in a drought in Pinellas County and uh, we have watering restrictions and, and, and there's not enough rain. But soon, very soon, we'll have more storm water than we'll know what to do with. And uh, we have to take steps to uh, make sure that it is drained away from our houses and it winds up in the open bodies of water without degradating itself. Uh, and, and, and I think it's a concept that maybe people have a hard time uh, understanding what happens to rain to turn it into a, a, a green soggy mess when it gets to some of these open water areas. So we're gonna run a quick video right now. You and I had, have talked about this uh, issue at length and we're gonna run a quick video right now to, to explain to people what happens when the water comes from the sky and goes into those open waterways. Where do you live in Pinellas County? Some people might say St. Petersburg, Clearwater, or along the beaches. But there's one answer we all share that's especially important to our environmental geography. Wherever you live, work, or play in Pinellas County, you live, work, and play in a watershed. What is a watershed? <laughs> watershed is a place that's uh, protected uh, where the rainfall... Uh, uh... I have no idea. It's actually where the water flows, something to do with uh, retaining the water underground water from a certain source. Um. Well, the watershed is the water that's in the area. Um. An underground water source, and it's usually, um, uh, yep, that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> Simply put, a watershed is an area of land that drains to an open body of water. Pinellas County is divided up into several specific watersheds, but every square foot of land drains somewhere. After a summer rainstorm, water runs from your lawn and driveway down your street along the gutter to a storm sewer drain. Unlike sanitary sewers that connect with a treatment plant, storm water runs directly through underground pipes to neighborhood ponds and streams until it eventually washes into the open waters of Tampa Bay or the Gulf of Mexico. And while the rainwater may start out clean, it doesn't stay that way. It picks up a collection of bacteria, litter, trash, and pollutants along its journey. Here's where the pollution problem begins, right in the front lawn. People in Pinellas County use lots of nitrogen-based fertilizer to get a good healthy lawn, but too much of a good thing only washes away in the rain, right down the storm sewer into open water. When you take a glass of water and dip it into the bay and you hold it up, what do you want to see? Do you want to see clear water? You want to see clean water that you can swim in and fish in and take your kids to the beach? Or do you want to see a green soupy mess? Because that is what excess nitrogen does to our water. So what do we do about the problem as good residents of our local watersheds? Bag your grass clippings or leave them on the lawn, but don't blow them into the street. Pick up after your pet. Put litter in the trash. Fix any leaks on your car. Go easy on the fertilizer and insecticide and be mindful of the ban on nitrogen and phosphorus-based fertilizer in the summertime. Keeping the watershed clean helps preserve the quality of Pinellas County's open waters. Well, my husband's a big fisherman, so it's important to us because he constantly goes fishing and brings home fish that we eat. So I gotta make sure for my little ones that it's healthy. Habits are tough to break and people get lazy like about picking up after their dog. 
and blowing stuff in the street instead of putting the leaves in the bag. I think basically people are doing a lot better than they used to, at least from what I see when I'm going through the trail, riding the bike on the trail or, walk, or walking or running through the park. I think they're doing better. Could do better, but are doing better. For more information on what you can do to keep our waterways clean, call Pinellas County's Watershed Management Hotline at 464-4425 or email them at watershed at pinellascounty.org. You can also go online to the Watershed Management website at pinellascounty.org slash environment slash watershed. Wherever you live, work, or play in Pinellas County, you live, work, and play in a watershed, and it's your responsibility to keep that watershed clean. Well, a lot can happen to uh, stormwater along the way, and when, when it winds up in the open waterways, we can have a mess on our hands. Yes, that is absolutely true. Um, you know, we can't control rain, and in Pinellas County, we receive, you know, about 50 to 60 percent of our annual rainfall in a four-month period of time. You know, so, you know, everything from cigarette butts to fertilizers to pesticides to wa waste from our pets, when the rainfall hits it, carries it down the road into the storm drain, ultimately it's going to end up somewhere where we don't want that. It'll end up in one of our lakes, it'll end up in Tampa Bay, and, you know, we don't have wastewater treatment plants for stormwater, so we have to ensure that we keep our environment as clean as possible. And the water quality has become a real issue for us. Yes, it is very challenging. Um, the uh, state and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency have developed new numeric standards for nitrogen and phosphorus in our, in our waterways. We have standards for bacteria, for coliform bacteria in our waterways, as well as several other parameters. And, you know, the, with the goal to maintain our systems in, as a fishable, swimmable waterway. And that's what we want for our communities. And you see that wherever you look in Pinellas County, on the lakes and streams, the, 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 the intercoastal waterway, people are fishing, they're, they're, they're swimming, they're water skiing, they're power boating, they're jet skiing, uh, and yet 74% of these waters are polluted, according to these statistics. And it's not something we can ignore, uh, I understand. Uh, these are federal standards that have to be met. Yes, these, uh, you know, when a water body is determined not to meet a standard, you know, the state develops a mechanism and puts places that that regulation in our stormwater permit and we have to develop a plan to address it you know so it is a mandatory requirement but it's also good stewardship of our environment and of course if we don't there are fines involved there's a penalty to pay yes there can be significant fines to pay with regard this is the clean water act it's it's not some little <laughs> little rule <laughs> and you've told me earlier that it's not a quick easy fix it is not. You know, this um, Pinellas County is very urban. It developed very early. So about 80% of our urban area was developed before there were regulations in place to protect water quality. So now we're having to go out into the community and do what we call retrofitting, you know, retrofitting the community with stormwater management systems, doing additional maintenance, doing projects to improve both drainage to keep water out of people's homes, but also clean that water before it ends up in our lakes and our streams. Now that whole process of keeping water out of people's homes and getting it to these open bodies of water, there's a lot of infrastructure involved and it's something that people don't think about because they don't see it. Been a lot of news in the headlines about sinkholes and sometimes what will happen, people think a sinkhole is developing in the street along the side of the road, only it's not a sinkhole, it's a stormwater sewer that has collapsed. And you're telling me that that's, uh, that, that's a big danger for us here in Pinellas County. Yes, and in, um, you know, in the unincorporated area, we have accounted for approximately 28 miles of this corrugated metal pipe uh, that was installed before 1976. We don't use corrugated metal pipe anymore. And, you know, when it collapses, it can take, you know, all of the other infrastructure with it, the water, the sewer lines, the, the roadway itself. And so you're, you're going from what would be a relatively inexpensive pipe replacement or pipe repair and now going to a major project because we have to re repair and restore everything that was lost. Not to mention the fact that all of that material probably went where we didn't want it to go. So it's important to be proactive, as you said, to avert catastrophe by doing proactive maintenance on these older pipes. Yes, it is. I mean, it makes, you know, it's, it's a prevention versus cure strategy. You know, if we prevent a collapse, it's a lot less expensive to repair a pipe or to even replace that pipe than it's going to be if we have to 
react to the catastrophe. And once again, it's not something that you can postpone any longer. It, it's, you have to start working on these projects right now. No, this, this can has been kicked down the road <laughs> too far, and we need to start taking measurable steps. Um, <clears throat> The, the idea of, of, of staying dry, uh, people, when it rains, and it does rain in the summertime, if we have a tropical storm blow through, we've all seen the results of that much rainfall. Uh, people don't want it in their driveways, they don't want it in their garages, they don't want it in their living rooms, uh, but yet uh, some of the, 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 the drainage canals and ditches that are supposed to drain this water from the neighborhoods, uh, I understand they're probably uh, maybe only 20% effective because they're all clogged up. We have a, a very extended uh, maintenance cycle for these channels and ditches. Um, in addition to that, you know, because the community may not recognize what that swale, that ditch is in front of their house, they will fill it in and think it's part of their yard, and when in reality they just filled in the conduit that transmits the water away from them. So, you know, we have a maintenance problem, we have a, a public engagement problem. We need the community to understand how those systems work and how they benefit them as a, as a community asset, you know, so that we're not then later fighting about filling them in and having to put them back where they were. And I think we saw that this past summer we had a tropical systems move through. Isaac, uh, Sandy, uh, these all dumped a tremendous amount of rainfall in the Tampa Bay area and, and you, you saw the result of, of clogged drainage ditches and inadequate infrastructure in, in, in the flooding that occurred during those storms. Yes, I mean, basically those types of extreme events put pressure on these systems that are already um, struggling. You know, you've got pipes that are not very good. You've got uh, open waterways that are not free flowing. So when you're adding an extreme amount of rain and extreme pressure on these systems, you know, they can collapse and break down and back up. And also, uh, there are a lot of private, uh, like industrial complexes and condominium developments and private neighborhoods, you know, private uh, developments. They all have kind of their own stormwater drains, and, and we have to ensure that those are working adequately as well. Yes, I mean, a lot of communities don't recognize when, um, you know, they come in their community and they see these ponds within their community. Um, what that pond is actually serving. You know, it's not just flood control, it is water quality. And like any other asset that a community owns, they need to be maintained. And when they're not maintained, they contribute to the problem as well. Now, I should mention that all this work, we've talked about environmental problems, we've talked about uh, drainage, uh, with the cleaning the drains, getting them free flowing, we've talked about replacing infrastructure. All of this costs money and it costs a lot of money. Yes. How, do, how are we proposed to pay for this all, this work that absolutely has to be done? Well, this spring we will bring a proposal to the Board of County Commissioners for what is called a stormwater utility fee for the unincorporated area. And, um, you know, unlike the penny for Pinellas, um, this funding can be used for ma maintenance type activities in these types of environmental improvements, whereas the penny can be used only to build things this type of fee can be used to maintain things. And once something's built, we have the obligation to maintain it for its entire life cycle. And we'll uh, find out more about this in May, and we'll have you back on another installment of Good to Know to kind of explain the details, the dollars and cents of this whole thing. One last thing before we leave, because we've reached the end of our allotted time period here, but people tell us in survey after survey, and when we talk to them at meetings, that quality of life is important to them. Is that not true? Yes, I mean, when you look at the community surveys that you know our own communications department has done, and around the state as well, the University of Florida just completed a survey. Water is important to communities. Their quality of life is important, and everyone recognizes that those two are very interconnected. You don't get one without the other. Absolutely. Well, thank you for joining us on this month's edition of Good to Know. Thanks to my special guest, Kelly Levy, from uh, the DEI the Division of Watershed Management in Pinellas County. For more information on what you can do to keep our waterways clean, you can call Pinellas County's Watershed Management Hotline at 464-4425 or email watershed at PinellasCounty.org. You can also go online to the Watershed Management website, PinellasCounty.org slash environment slash watershed. From the Pinellas County Communications Department, I'm Len Sazinski. Look for another edition of Good to Know next month from Pinellas County Connection Television.